Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Tiffany. I'm here to let you know that this video is one of a series of videos on this subject. So I was inspired in the middle of the night. I woke up and I had this idea that I could create a decision flow chart for each of the human design energy types and its authority. I want you to know that I'm taking a topic that is very nuanced, that it can be complicated at times, and I'm distilling it into a simple flow chart. Please keep this in mind when you're watching the video for your energy type and your authority. It's nuanced, but it's a great way of just kind of mapping out and just showing you the steps. If we were to slow down our decision-making process and really tune into our strategy and authority, and how those two things work together, the flow chart is going to give you a, just a very simple distilled version of how it might look in a very perfect situation. And before I get into the decision flow chart for your energy type and authority, I just want to let you know that you can find me at www.aluxuriousmind.com. I want to let you know that there are multiple ways to work with me there. I have some courses on human design. I just released a course called Unlock Your Money Code, and I have a free library of all kinds of good things that you can check out, and there's no strings attached. I'm not even asking for an email for my stuff in my free library. So if that is of interest to you, go ahead and pop over there as well when you get done with this video. All right, so in theory, if you're watching this video, you are a manifester with emotional authority. So as a manifester, how do you honor your strategy to inform? And then how do you leverage your emotional authority? Like, how do you know the voice of the authority that you have, the emotional authority? How do you distinguish that voice from the voice of your mind? So you notice at the top of this flow chart, we have a triggering event and it is, there's a job opportunity, there's a job offer, there's a project you've been invited to work on, there's an event you've been asked if you want to attend, or there's an event out there in the ether and you're just trying to decide if you would like to go. So the first question we're going to ask is, does this thing, whatever it is, align with my skill sets, my talents, my gifts? Does it align with my curiosity? Does it align with my passions and interests? If the answer is no, then you're probably going to want to consider saying no to the thing. If the answer is yes, the next step is to buy yourself some time or take some time so that you can essentially tame the dragon of your emotional wave. So as a manifester with emotional authority, that means that you have your own emotional wave. So think about the, the motion waves, right? They kind of go up and down and you're going to have parts of the day or parts in your cycle. It could be a day or over the course of a week or whatever it is for you, where you feel in a higher mood, you feel like you're in a good mood. And then you have parts of your emotional wave where you're feeling more in a low mood. It is really important for you to not make big decisions when you are in the high or the low of your emotional wave, because if you're in the high of your wave, you might say yes to something that you later think back and go, gosh, why did I say yes to that thing? Like, I don't even know why I said yes to it. And then you're regretting it and you want to back out or whatever it is. Or if you're in the low of your emotional wave, you might want to say no to something because you're not in the best mood. Maybe you're not feeling super social, but then later you're like, gosh, why didn't I say yes to that thing? Why didn't I want to go? So for you, what is really important is buying time. So for example, if you get a job offer, the best thing you can do for yourself is say, hey, when do you need to know or have a response from me? may I have 24 to 72 hours to think about this thing? And then what you're going to do in that time is you are going to check in with yourself over the course of that time span. So 24 to 72 hours, you can just check in. Okay, how am I feeling about this thing right now? Am I feeling good about it? Am I not feeling good about it? Does it make me feel expansive? Does it make me feel contracted? How does it feel to me? Also, some other good rules of thumb for sure are definitely sleep on it. And if you're waiting that amount of time, that's going to be by a byproduct of that situation. But you're also going to want to make sure not to make a decision out of desperation if you can. So that goes pretty much for anybody, but especially for people who have emotional authority is you really want to give yourself some time to kind of wait till you're in that neutral grounded place before you know if something's energetically correct for you or not. 
All right. So let's say that you've allowed yourself some time and you're still not sure. And you're saying to me, Tiffany, I don't even know how the voice of my authority shows up. I don't understand how emotional authority speaks to me. And so you don't have a clear answer. But if you do have a clear answer, then yay, we're like good to go, right? But if you don't have a clear answer, the next thing you want to consider is, is the voice of my mind clouding out or running over the voice of my intuition? Am I unable to hear my intuitive voice because the voice of my mind is chattering too much and it's got me all confused? And so what you will want to ask yourself, because the voice of the mind is going to be practical, it's going to be logical, grounded in logic, it's going to be telling lots of stories. So what does that look like? In the example of a job opportunity, that is going to look like, well, you shouldn't apply for that job or you shouldn't accept that job because you don't have the right credentials or you don't have the right background for that. You know, that's that's the voice. You shouldn't go to that event because so-and-so might be there. You should go to this event because you have this obligation. There's a social obligation and people are going to be upset if you're not there. And if you'll notice, the mind is telling stories. It's telling a story of we're not qualified enough or it might not be the right opportunity. It might not make enough money. It's telling us a story that, you know, we should do this, we should do that, or we should not do something. So when that should voice keeps coming up, that's when you also know it's the voice of your mind and it's not the voice of your intuition. That is just literally your mind trying to run the show because the whole goal of human design is the more we can listen to that intuitive voice or authority, we can free the mind to express its genius in our life. The mind should not be controlling where we go, what decisions we make and what we're doing. And I know this is like anti everything we hear out there, but really what we're wanting to do is listen to that intuitive voice because when we listen to the intuition, that is when the magic happens, okay? We want the magic to happen. And so when we're listening to that voice, that's when the magic is gonna happen. So if you can tease out the difference between your voice and then tuning into, does this job opportunity make me feel how I want to feel? Will it make me feel how I want to feel? Does going to this event sound like a good idea? Does it feel good to me? Does it not feel good to me? Tuning into those, does this sound good to me or not? And tuning into it over time and getting multiple hits of like, okay, yes, this feels good or no, it doesn't. And then anytime you're shooting yourself or something can be traced back to logic, that's the mind. So in a perfect situation, you're going to want to go with the intuitive hit that you get of following something that feels energetically correct to you. And then because you're a manifester, once you make that decision, whether it's to do the thing, to not do the thing, that's when you're going to have your opportunity to inform others around you of what you're doing. And of course, that's up to your discretion of whether you feel like you don't have to inform it about everything you do in your life, but there's going to be definitely things in your life where you're feeling compelled to inform. Let the people know around you what you're decided to do. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please let me know.